Hi everyone, my name is Jacob and recently I bought this RC tank. And let me tell you, it really is quite fun. I bought it from AliExpress and it wasn't expensive, but the build quality is pretty nice. So I was thinking it's actually a pretty good robot platform. And in this video I'm planning to put Ardu Pilot on it and do some autonomous missions. Seems interesting? Well, keep watching and let's get to work! Alright, so first let's take this tank apart to see what we are working with. I was a bit surprised to find out that the design it has is based on the actual real-life vehicle called Ripso. And it looks really cool! From what I read, it's one of the fastest tracked vehicles ever built and yet it is still very maneuverable. I did some digging and apparently it achieves that via simple brake-based skid steering, commonly found on heavy machines like bulldozers. Our Ripso, on the other hand, uses a more complex double differential skid steering. It has one main DC motor that moves the vehicle forward and also the second smaller one that is used for turning. Pretty cool for a cheap toy! Ardu Pilot already has a ready to use skid steering profile for such vehicles, but first we gotta figure out a way to control these motors. My first thought was to use those old RC car ESCs I had lying around. They have standard PWM input just like every other drone ESC, but I quickly realized they have one big problem. They are pre-programmed with brake function, meaning they work ok in forward, but if you want to reverse you have to give the signal two times. This unfortunately won't pair well with Ardu Pilot, so I came up with different solution. The idea is to use this dual channel DC motor driver meant for small robots. Now this driver is not compatible with Ardu Pilot out of the box, since it requires a combination of two PWM channels to operate one motor. So to get around this issue, I added a small Arduino Pro Mini as a PWM translator. It receives the PWM signal from the flight controller and then converts it to the motor driver in such a way that the Ardu pilot is expecting. The code I wrote works by using interrupts and it also has a special function for smoothing the output signal to reduce motor jitter. And once we set it up on the bench and connect the battery, it appears to work quite well. So, that's great, but this whole setup looks very messy. So, I quickly jumped to Vision 360 and created this plate, which has mounting points for imported components and can also be screwed in directly to the tank chassis. Before installation, I glued the motor driver and Arduino inside and then led the power connector as well as signal wires to the top. Alright, so I think it looks much better now and the platform is ready to be connected with ArduPilot. But before that, let's talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that specializes in making high quality PCBs in all shapes and sizes. I've been using their PCB services for many projects and they always deliver great quality. But PCBWay isn't just about PCBs, they also offer excellent CNC machining and 3D printing services. So if you want to build this or any of my other projects, but you don't have access to 3D printer, PCBWay is the best way to get your parts made. So don't wait and go check out PCBWay's website at pcbway.com. And now back to the video. Ok, so now to install Ardu Pilot on this rover, first we need a flight controller. And for this build I'm going to use the Kakute H7 Wing. It was sent to me by Holybro together with a bunch of other stuff, for which I'm really grateful. And so in this build I will also test their M2 micro GPS unit and for the first time a proper Mavlink telemetry setup with their Holybro telemetry radios V3. To get started with the flight controller, first I soldered the LRS receiver and the telemetry wires to available UART ports and also soldered the power connectors to the bottom side of the board. And what's nice about this board is that it has a massive amount of interfaces for all sorts of future upgrades and also because of its H7 processor and SD card slot it can run advanced Artopilot Lua scripts for things like automatic pit tuning, obstacle avoidance and much much more. Now, as far as I know, vibration isolation isn't such a big deal on rovers, so to attach the flight controller I simply screw it to the top of the chassis. Next, to connect to it we can just use the USB adapter and jump straight into Mission Planner. 
Another nice thing is that this board already comes with Artupilot installed, so no flashing is required. The only thing you need to change is firmware, from plane to rover in the install firmware tab. Now I gotta be honest, this is actually my first time playing with Ardu Rover, and I think most of you probably haven't heard much about it either, so I will try to explain the whole setup process in as much detail as I can. Overall, the rover firmware is less complicated than other branches since the vehicle only moves in two dimensions. And because of that, there are fewer tabs and less parameters, for example, the initial tuning tab is missing entirely. However, what's left is mostly the same as in copter and plane builds. So we begin by setting up the first important parameter, the HRS orientation to 6. Next we perform the accelerometer calibration, by placing the rover on each side. And once that's done, we move on to setting up the servo outputs. Now I know I said at the beginning of the video that this tank uses skid steering, but based on how it actually works, it should really be defined as separate steering and throttle, because just like in typical RC car, we have one motor for turning and one motor for throttle. And since using throttle stick isn't ideal for controlling this rover, I remapped it to the pitch stick using the RC map parameter. Next, to configure our radio control, we can follow this guide from the Express LRS website. I have my receiver on the serial port 6, and once that's defined, you also need to perform the radio calibration to finish the process. Once you have those channels set up and working, make sure to assign one channel more for arming and another one for flight modes. I have this function on my 6 position switch and I can choose between all the different control modes. They all behave very similar to copter flight modes but most of them require GPS position and compass. So for now, let's just check if our primary mode, manual, works as intended. So to start up the rover, I first connected the Arduino input wires to the defined servo outputs on the Kakute flight controller, and then I strapped in a 2S high voltage LiPo battery and let the rover run free. As you can see, our modifications didn't harm the rover performance. I would even say that the new driver and high voltage battery gave it a lot more power. But at this point, it's still just a toy. A very fun toy, but a toy nonetheless. So to give it more capabilities, I installed this GPS mast with the Holybro M10 micro GPS and compass unit. This will give the rover important information about its heading and its position on Earth, which will unlock all the autonomous Ardu rover control modes. Setting it up is super simple. You just plug the connector into the GPS port and it's already defined as GPS in Ardu Pilot, so it works right out of the box. The last thing I wanted to add was the telemetry unit to have a constant Mavlink connection with the rover. And for this I simply attached one of the Holybro telemetry radios to the back of the rover and then defined the corresponding serial port as Mavlink 2. Then if you power up the rover and plug the second telemetry unit into your device with Mission Planner, they will automatically connect. And just like that you have a robust, wireless USB connection with your machine. It's really handy for tuning parameters on the go and it's also necessary for some control modes like Guided. So, now that we've got everything set up, let's take this rover outside and see what it can do. The first thing you should do when you're out in the field is to calibrate the compass by rotating the vehicle on every axis. Once that's done, let's reboot and try it out in manual mode. So it drives pretty well, 
and if you look at the telemetry screen, you can see the actual position of the rover at all times, which means in theory you could control it without even looking at the ground. But because we are using ArduPilot, we can take it a step further and get even lazier by handing the control over to the rover itself. Once we switch to the guided mode, we can just place a waypoint on the map and the rover will drive there all by itself. Here's how it works. So that's pretty cool, but honestly it's best to keep an eye on the rover at all times, because sometimes it might end up ramming itself into an obstacle. Next control mode is RTL, which works the same way as it does with drones, the rover will simply return to the starting point in a straight line. However, here on the ground there was some GPS drift, so the rover couldn't came back to the exact same spot. But I'm sure it tried its best. Maybe in the future I should try RTK setup to improve accuracy. But overall RTL on rovers isn't ideal, especially if you live in the city. A much better option is Smart RTL. Here I drop the rover behind my house until I lost the visual contact and then I engage Smart RTL. As you can see, the rover managed to turn around and find its way back by following the same path. If that had been standard RTL, it probably would just slump into a wall. So smart RTL is definitely a great feature. Later, while testing circle mode, I found out that the rover doesn't have the best PID settings. You can notice a slight oscillation in the yaw axis while driving in automatic modes. But since our flight controller is so capable, we can try fixing that with Lua script. There is an ArduPilot script called QuickTune, which can automatically optimize the gains and speed settings. To run it, you need to download it to the flight controller SD card and then activate it via the radio switch while the rover is in the circle mode. Here's how the tuning process looks like. After it was done, we can see in the basic tuning tab that it had indeed changed some parameters. Overall, I don't think it completely fixed the oscillation problem, but the rover did feel more responsive after the adjustments. It might give better results on flat surface though, since the grass sometimes makes this little rover struggle, especially during tight turns. And of course you can also try tuning it manually. The entire process is described in the Ardu rover documentation. With these new PID settings, I decided to give it one more test, an autonomous waypoint mission. So I created a few waypoints in rectangular pattern around my yard. Once I switched the rover to auto mode, it started driving to the first one.
and no surprises here, it completed the mission without any trouble. After all those tests, I'd say our little rover platform has proven to be a pretty capable machine. But to prepare it for the serious mission, we need to add one more thing, an FPV camera system. So I jumped back to Fusion 360 and designed this cage mount for my Voxnail GM3 gimbal and Moonlight VTX. I did a whole video about this system a while ago, so feel free to check that out for more details. This cage can be attached to the front of the tank and its job is to protect the fragile gimbal from any damage during crashes. At the back of the cage there is a mounting point for the VTX and above that I added a powerful 24V fan with step-up converter to cool the rapidly heating video unit. The coolest thing about this system is that if you use it with Voxnail Digital Goggles, you can enable free axis head tracking, which really makes you feel like you are a tiny driver controlling this rover. So let's give it a try! That was insanely fun! With this tiny machine, I could reach places I wouldn't fit myself, so it could be a great pot for inspections in tight spaces or maybe even caves. Overall, I hope you learned something new from this project, because I certainly did. Ardu Rover is something I wanted to try for a long time and now I'm just realizing how many possibilities it really has. I am already working on another Ardu Rover build, but this time it's going to operate on water, so stay tuned for that. But for now that's all, if you liked the video be sure to hit that like button or maybe even subscribe. And if you want to know what I'm working on next, you can also support me on Patreon. Anyway, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, thanks to Holybro for sending me your great hardware and thanks to you all for watching. See you soon and bye!